Hey, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in tonight where we're going to take another first look at a game called Encompassed. Now, we got to admit, Georgia game developers, we do normally stream Georgia, ga uh, Georgia games. But tonight uh, is Nick Harmer from Drop Everything Games, right? Uh, and he has the distinction of being the most distant of our regular GGA group members. And coming from the distant Georgia city of Nebraska... Right? <laughs> Today, he just finds the game dev community here more supportive than what he has there. So we're going to show him a little support. Uh, to give you a brief description, um, he started his uh, company, Drop Everything Games, under the idea that anything's worth doing and doing well. Um, he wanted to make quality games, not just one-offs or a quick buck for some clone, but an interesting, unique game that can convey deeper meaning. He believes that games have a great power to convince or to teach. And that power can easily be used uh, to make the world better or worse, right? So he's kind of an idealist where it comes to games. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and close everything out here so you can stop watching me talk. And here, Nick, how you doing? I'm so good. <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed. This is amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I, I really appreciate it. I've been talking with uh, with Brian quite a bit today, and he's just a fantastic human being. It's been good talking with him. Awesome. Which Brian is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Trying to get me in trouble. And by the way, that other voice, of course, is... Uh, Andrew Greenberg, whoever he is. Yeah, Andrew Greenberg, <laughs> whoever he is, right? We all know Andrew. All right, there we go. Now you can see me, and yes, you see my beautiful desktop and background. So we're going to take a dive straight in. Now, this game is out available on mobile. Um, I started to try to make it work, but guess what? I scored some points. You know what that means? <laughs> I it means found i got to go point. patch it out is what it means. <laughs> well, these first looks, one of my f favorite things to do, and I need to start tallying up a sheet how many bugs I start finding with all of your first looks. is great. So apparently I found a bug <laughs> on the mobile version. That's cool, uh, but also it's a beneficial in a hidden way because apparently this is a VR game, and if I'd tried to do mobile, you would have seen me play the game like this with my mobile device, right? And I don't yeah. think that would work too well. It, uh, it would have been awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. still, still all the same, uh, this is the Unity. Um, he obviously built this game in Unity, and this is one of the builds. He passed it along to me, and uh, here we go. Sweet. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm going to do graphics quality fantastic, if that's okay by you. Oh, yeah. No, it it's, you know, designed for mobile. It should be able to do whatever your computer So, as he do. says, designed for virtual reality. Uh, uses audio extensively. So, hopefully, we'll be able to hear that audio. I hope. Yeah, often the gameplay will be behind you, so you may mean to turn around. Stand by. Yeah, honestly, the reason that first section there is so long uh, is because on mobile it takes a while for uh, the different shaders to load in properly. <laughs> okay, so who's your VO right here? Um, what is your question? I don't know if I know what you mean by VO. Voice. Voice over. Voice over oh. actor. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, no, I, I totally, it just, sorry, it took me a second. That's actually my wife. Um, she is gorgeous and I love her. <laughs> that is a good answer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am um, going to get rid of my camera too. Here we go. Oops. Sorry, folks. Here we go. We're back. There we go. Thank you. See the full game. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. I like the texture I saw there. <laughs> uh oh. Where? I'm still nervous about this. I just uh, on that back wall there. Yeah, it, it's got more specularity than I want. <laughs> oh, did I just chalk up another point? Uh, yeah, sure. You can have one for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nebraska, so uh, what made you, how did you find out about the GGDA? Um,. Well, I don't know if this is the right answer, but this is the true answer. Uh, I just searched on Facebook for all of the game des development like organizations everywhere, and I was just applied for every single one that I could um, because I was like, I have to market this thing, and I, I I know nothing about marketing, but I've heard that you use Facebook for marketing, so <laughs> let me just see what the other devs are doing. Well, you know, the funny thing is we actually vet everyone who tries to join and we specifically weed out those devs from elsewhere who are just spamming every group. And one of the reasons <laughs> Nick got in is he was actually not spamming every group marketing. 
when we added him. Well, I, I appreciate that. Um, so this so... is an honest developer here that we're talking to, right? Yes, I am playing with uh, physics here, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's. I actually really recommend doing that um, because it, it's a very unique feeling, uh, and you kind of got to get what, what like the feel for it before you get into it because there's some places you'll have to use it very tactically. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, yeah. To let our viewers know, this is as far as I've ever gotten. I, uh, I started trying to play it on the phone, and then I uh, played it to up to this point right here. Uh, haven't gone any further because I want you as the viewers and uh, to actually get to see the same experience as a first-time player. So, anyway. Um, uh, while I was talking, I wasn't listening. Tell us what you're doing. Tell us what you're doing and seeing, Brian. Let's get your... Uh, experiences first share that with everybody watching and then we'll uh, grill nick on what he actually created all right well first yeah. impressions um i i did watch the promo video and like i know that um in a, a a short premise description um or synopsis impression is uh that you know you are on a dying planet and so i'm, I'm kind of getting the feeling right now that maybe i'm another either satellite or another planet looking at a planet or looking out at a planet Possibly even a hurricane, but way back there in the background. And for some reason, I don't fully understand why, but I need to control this little orb to go in a specific direction. And it follows my compass. So if my compass, and obviously my compass is pointing to me where the ball is located, either north or south, kind of feel. And uh, okay, I've run into a wall. I'm gonna assume I gotta push a button. Yes, there we go, physics. Yay, physics. <laughs> Thank you, Unity, and your physics engine, right? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so glad it takes care of all that stuff for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't grab any special plug-in for it, using just what shipped with the uh, engine? Yep. Yep. This is just straight-up Unity physics. Hmm. Is the ball supposed to go behind the object? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, cool. I, 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 as you have did I not... The transversal of the oh, did I... I failed. First step, you will begin to see you got it. Oh, well, okay. You kind of got it. <laughs> I'll take a kind of. Um, so if you listen to the voiceover, uh, what she says is that this is actually a dead end. Um, and so you're supposed to use that orb at the bottom to exit. Use the orb at the bottom. So uh, one thing I guess I didn't ever mention to you is that our, our streams uh, is roughly around 10 to 30 seconds behind real time. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm trying to tell you in as, an in as close to real time as possible. <laughs> this could be a little challenging. So I'm behind. It said exit or restart. Right. You, you did the you did it properly. Um, so what she says, and I don't remember exactly how I wrote the script, is you stare at the orb for three seconds uh, and then you exit instead of restart. And the other key feature is that this orb is in every level of the game. Ah, so. <laughs> well, being, having to listen to you and the VO is is not going to happen. I can only listen to one of you at once. <laughs> yeah, and so we actually, if you want to stay on the menu screen really quick, or I guess you're already out of it by the time I'm speaking. Um, on the menu screen, there's actually a way to turn off the voiceover, but the voiceover is where we tell the story. The rest of it's just kind of a puzzle game. So, is there any jump to? Like, is there a button I could push right now to jump to the menu? Yeah, uh, turn around behind you, and on the wall back there, there's another one of those orbs, and you just stare at it and hit exit, and you'll get out. Ah. When you are ready, stare at the sign that says proceed. Okay. This will take you back into her bodies in preparation to coalesce. So, yeah, and then so if you go to the left wall, there's a toggle narration, and you can turn the narration off there. And I'll kind of give you a synopsis of what's happening as opposed to, uh, you know, trying to mix the voiceover in with everything else. Um, it's definitely a game that's meant to be played, like, you know, alone by yourself. So, Gotcha, okay. So this is not Sigourney Weaver. No, no. <laughs> no, I can't afford Sigourney Weaver. But my wife, she yeah, works she for free. She kind of sounds like Sigourney, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if There'll be some points where you're like, oh yeah, she's she's not a professional voice actress. Oh. Um, so, 
but for the most part, she did a very good job. She did. I exactly think she did a fantastic job. Yeah. To uncover the story of each body we pass through. Hey, she's still talking to me. This body Apparently, really I didn't do it right. <clears throat> maybe, maybe I didn't do it right. Maybe I didn't do it right. Maybe, maybe I didn't. Do All it right, right, so I've got erase data and toggle narration. Yeah, and, and if saying. you start toggle narration, it loads back in. You should be good. Um, okay. Are you sure? Yeah, there you go. All right, I think I got it this time. Now you yeah. can talk All right. to me. All right, sweet, sweet. <laughs> yeah, so the idea is uh, the world has actually already died, um, and these are the spiritual remains of the world. Okay. So as you move through, you uh, you basically experience these little vignettes of each person that lived in the world and their role there. Um, and some of them are really good and some of them are not as good. But uh, for the most part, the idea, the, the, the story that it's telling um, is the story of uh, probably the first one. I assume we're only going to get to the first boss today. Uh the first one is a story about ambition um, and the story of all these other people who the main bad guys ambition affected in life. Um, and as we progress toward the end of the level, we begin to see like the manifestation of, of his ambition in the world. And each one of them has a name and like different characteristics. And it's all just told by my wife, like telling us about their lives and little snippets. So this scene here, uh, you're already most of the way through it, I'd assume with the stream lag. But this one, uh, these different colored balls, um, the lights that were in the altars were the primary remnants of the, the world's soul. Um, and then the balls that took them are our remaining bad guys uh, that are you know, splitting up the pieces of her soul and going and, and playing with them. Um, so we have to go get those pieces of her soul back. Ah. Interesting. So what made you decide to go uh, VR? Is this your first game? or This is my first game. This is my first game. Um, so the story goes like this. Uh, the music actually was done by a guy. His name's Kevin Anthony. Um, I met him when he was doing his bachelor's work uh, in, in Idaho with me. Um, and he is an amazing, brilliant composer. Uh, and he's working on his uh, PhD in, in California right now. So he's also really smart on top of it. Um, and he developed this system that like kind of creates the sound over time. Uh, and we didn't really know what to do with it. So he came up with this idea of, you know, like mobile VR is going to be the new big thing. Um, and the big problem with the VR games, and I'm sure you guys have experienced this before, is when there's a lot of stuff moving, you begin to get very sick right like there's all this you know motion and and people get motion sick and can probably only take it for a few minutes at a time um so what i wanted to do is create a very stationary world and kevin had the idea for uh just like like a puzzle game like you know the old labyrinth game where you have the two twist knobs except instead it's around your head um and honestly, it's been the hardest elevator pitch ever because trying to tell somebody what this is is just immensely difficult. <laughs> I, Imagine. So I'm, I'm kind of playing with sound effects here. It almost sounded like for a moment, like uh, uh, sound effects wise, it seemed to be cueing me that I was getting close to this exit point right here. I'm trying not to, oh, whoops. I was trying not to get in there. Uh, you'll see it in just a second. Um, and apparently it went somewhere else. <laughs> yes, I, I am a few seconds behind you. You just got there. Um, but yeah, the, the sound is actually really cool design. Uh, each object that is interactable in the scene uh, generates its own sound effect. Um, and so together they kind of weave into this, uh, into this orchestra. Um, it, so, al it almost felt like a theremin kind of effect, you know, the closer you move your hand to it. And, or further, you know, it seemed to have that effect. Was that yeah. planned? Uh, y partially. Um, so okay, the volume so this, is changes this a Bob Ross? as you get closer to them. Is this a Bob Ross happy <laughs> accident? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's more of a... So I, I, I didn't do the sound 
design on this game uh, all that much. Like, there are a few sound effects that I put in, but for the most part, that was Kevin's. Um, and if you wanted a lot of information about it, I, I could put you in touch with him. But the short and long of it is that um, this game... Uh, Oops. We wanted it to feel very interactive. Um, one of the things when I do that I do when I develop a game is I start off with three words that define the feeling of the game, right? Three words that say, this is everything about this game. Um, so now you've made it, uh, this would have been explained in the story at this point, but you've made it to a hub world. Um, and this hub world has a lot of different sub-levels in it. Um, and so the end of the hub world is you go and you take out the boss. The, world, the area that you were in before this was an exact clone where it kind of gives you an intro to who the boss is. Um, so if you want to go find one of the exits, not the one immediately below you, uh, it'll take you into one of the levels. Um, yeah, so my game design, I start with three words of what I want the player to feel. Um, and so our words were, uh, I believe, mystery, mastery, and adventure. Um, and the mastery part is where the sound, like where we really went with the sound development. Uh, the idea was we wanted you to feel like you had a great effect in the world. And so all of the audio that you hear uh, is all put together based on your proximity to the objects in the world. Um, and you'll notice later as you get uh, some new objects, some of the objects in the game uh, have a danger sound and some have a like comfort sound if they're a good thing and some have a mystery sound if they're interesting. Um, anything that is hard and immovable has what I call the sturdy sound, um, okay. which is the drum track. <laughs> and so <laughs> the idea was that we, we created this feeling from the ground up, I guess. Gotcha. Very well, it seems like a very complicated skybox. <laughs> yeah, so I, I played around with a lot of different skyboxes before I got to this. Um, and I'll explain to you how I built it in a, in a bit. But uh, basically, the uh, yeah, I, I played around with them, and they none of them gave me the feeling of mystery or the feeling of adventure. Um, they mostly just gave me the feeling of there's a sky, and it's not very interesting. Right. Uh, so there is there's an object that you'll run in. I don't know if you'll run into it today in the playthrough, uh, but it's basically a random ball that uh, like swivels around and moves and occasionally like try to come get you. Uh, but its movement is mostly random, right? And that ball actually is asphyxed to a, a sphere. Um, and so I just copied that same thing because. <laughs> I do quick, dirty, easy coding sometimes. <laughs> um, and I uh, I put a transparency on it. And believe it or not, like, I fought that transparency for quite a while. Okay, you've gone back into a level that you've already beaten now. Interesting. Don't know how I did it. But do you <laughs> notice what I see? Do you see what I see? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> did I just earn yeah. another point? Mm, uh, that's one I'm not going to fix. So <laughs> one of the... <laughs> yes, but no. <laughs> yes, but no. All yes, right. but no. I'll I mean, it. there's... The the texturing is also, like, uh, quick and dirty. And there are some parts of this that I just had to be like, this is not my area of expertise. I can make things that are pretty, but I can't necessarily make things that are pretty and work and all flow together. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. <laughs> so, what? You're not gonna you're not gonna develop a triple A game on your very first game? What? Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to. Give me a team of a hundred people who know what they're doing, and then just cut me out of it, and we'll have a great one. Uh, well, uh, apparently, uh, don't think it's gonna happen. Wait. Nope. Nope. Don't think it's gonna happen in this particular game uh, when you see it uh, or this particular level. Hey, I. Have I kept going backwards? Yeah, yeah. You went back out to the to the main hub. Whoops. All right. So yeah, there's that menu. I guess I'm a little confused because it seems like you don't have much time to decide where you're gonna go. Uh, here it is, right here. You want to explain to me what you mean by that a little bit? Because ah, I can't seem to pause it. So I'm gonna watch the stream right about I guess there. That map looking mm -hmm. thing, yeah, I'm kind of moving around a lot. It doesn't seem like I have much choice, but it, it's 
it felt like it was just placing me wherever I was looking at the time. So mm, did I miss okay, something? so that's actually a progress bar. Um, it okay. tells you the levels that you've beaten. Um, right. And that that actually for me is more concerning than the than the poorly mapped texture. Um, because I uh, like I, I worked a long time on getting that system to, to work, and if it doesn't read well, that's hey, maybe something I'll go back for. I'll take another point for that. <laughs> Dang, you're, you're racking them up today. I know. Maybe we should do business more often. <laughs> well, that that actually kind of goes to uh, goes to prove something like even Andrew can talk about as well. Um, you know, when you have complete strangers playtest your game, you you end up learning so much more about yeah, your game yeah. than you ever could imagine you know so as a game developer you know like, you can be a master at your game you're like oh this is easy i got this figured out and you let a stranger play it and it's like they can't figure it out they don't know what to do for what oh snap yeah so i actually have i uh, like there i had a couple of kids over one day and had them play it uh and that's actually believe it or not the uh, green compass was not originally part of the design the green compass was a bunch of different people told me, I can never find the ball. Where is the ball? What am I supposed to be doing here? And so I made this big, bright green thing that's like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> but it feels like a really natural part of the game because it disappears when you're into like a traction range, right? So it feels like it's telling you how hard you're pulling on the ball. Yeah, like right now. Yeah, like you have complete control of that thing. That's not going anywhere. Right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Was I not supposed to touch that, apparently? I'm just going to try to stay silent for this whole section. Yeah. Talking oh, hey, what you, you, know, because... you know what? That's that's another terrible thing about uh, being a game developer. And when you let somebody else play your game for the first time, you know, can you keep your mouth shut and not tell them how to play the game? In the, right, in, because I need to know what's broken. I don't need to tell you what to do. <laughs> so that is sound advice uh, for anybody. Um, it's one of the hardest things to do as a game developer. You know, when you develop a game and you let other people play your game, you just want to be there like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't, no, don't do that. No, you don't understand. Dang it. <laughs> That's not so, what I built for you. Right? This was supposed to be beautiful. <laughs> But you'll learn so much more if you just keep your mouth shut and let them try to figure it out unless they get to a point. Now, for the sake of streaming, I'm going to uh, allow you a pass on that. So, I For this level, I still just want to see what you think about it. Because, believe it or not, I, I started this level off and I was like, this is the easiest level. It's one of the greatest tutorial levels. This is going to be amazing. And then... I had somebody play it, and they died on it like 15 times. They handed it to me like, I'm done. And I'm like, all right, well, I went and turned down the difficulty and showed it to somebody else. And they're like, this is too hard. I turned down the difficulty again, and I showed it to somebody else. And they're like, this is a tutorial? I'm like, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so that thing used to have spikes everywhere. And in one of the earlier versions of the game, uh, you may have noticed a door opened up for you after you beat those first two levels. Oh, really? I did not actually it's okay if you don't <laughs> well hey look i am trying to talk to you in stream at the same time so. yeah yeah you are trying to do a lot of things right now <laughs> um but one of the earlier versions the spikes like right now you can hit a spike once and then that spike will never hurt you again in an earlier version you could hit a spike and you could actually like bounce off it three times and just be dead instantly wow so especially like when you're trying to hold this thing up with your hand that was massively frustrating and i just didn't understand it so yeah, I am kind of scoping around. It looks like you have somewhat of a crazy looking smiley face here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this this level is actually about an assassin who worked for the main boss. Um, and the the sad like the end of her sad story is that she uh, that one of her acquired assassinations was was her lover. Um, and so she Oof. yeah, yeah. and so she feels like she's done the right thing. Uh, but in the end, it didn't really matter because her world died. Hmm. And you gave her a uni, bro? <laughs> I'm just I kidding. mean, what assassin doesn't have a unibrow, man? 
Every assassin I've ever met had a unibrow. Okay. You know. <laughs> hey, for our viewers out there, um, anybody tuned in, if you have any questions out there on any of those channels, uh, Twitch, Mixer, YouTube, uh, feel free to post them in chat, and I will get to them and pass them on as I see them. All right, moving right along. Um, I uh, so on a personal request, I would like to see that uh, the progression level a little bit longer, and like something to cue me that says this is what I am looking at, like a progression level. And I mean, now that I know, because you told me, had yeah. you not told me, yeah. Um, Do you want another point? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll take them all. Uh, there's there's an indicator uh, that is broken right now, evidently, uh, three... when you turn off the voices, and I didn't realize it was tied to the voices. Oh, mark uh, another that... mark for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like I, I didn't think that I had it tied to the to the narration, but when you toggle off the narration, um, and I knew this was a possibility, but I didn't, I didn't actually go in and tinker with it. Um, the when you turn off the narration, it uh, like so the the way that map is supposed to work that's like a map of all the levels there um and as you beat them you peel back that paper level on the top and you see more of what's actually underneath should i go turn um, the narrations back on i think it'll be too distracting for our viewers because like every level is almost completely full of voiceover okay um so th there would be just no way that we could talk Okay. And no way that I would know when to not to because I have the stream muted. So <laughs> I, hey, I think it's you know what I do. I do appreciate that you used a lot of VOs in your game. Yeah, well, you know, I had like Rose has a pretty amazing voice, um, and I had her not quite captive, but <laughs> I could get her to sit down and record stuff. And if I didn't like it, I could record it again. You know. Mm -hmm. And that's not always an option when you have voiceovers. If you hire an actor, you, you have to get it all done in one shot. And if you call them up again, like that's another three hundred dollars minimum, you know. Ah, uh, so how much? Do, how much of this is uh, in-home project versus um, uh, contracted? For instance, like you said, your music and sound guy is a contracted, right? Ah, uh. you're. Yeah, you're good. It won't hit it again. <laughs> you already passed it. Um, so the we did the the traditional first indie game model, which is I have a percentage agreement with uh, with four different people. Um, so the sound guy was one of the first guys I worked on this project with, um, and he. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, I'm apologizing for my level design, not for my. Uh, my conversation. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, so he he gets a percentage. Um, there was one of like the guy who taught me how to program uh, helped me with a few of the trickier programming things, um, and he gets a percentage. The biggest things that he worked on were the bosses, um, and so if you, uh, yeah. So when we get to the bosses, if we get to a boss today. Uh, you'll see some of his work. And then the only other guy that's been on it uh, is my marketing guy. Um, and other than that, it's just like all of the textures, all of the models. Um, I didn't use assets for that stuff. I just made it. Oh, wow. So you did all this in-house. Uh-oh. Yep. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, I knew this is a possibility, and that's why one of the first things I taught the player how to do was hit the reset button. Um, okay. So you're going to want to hit the reset button. Gotcha. Yeah, actually, I have that specific thing where uh, the ball gets trapped against one of those buttons after it comes back out. I have uh, fixed that particular problem on about maybe 12 of the levels so far, and I've never had somebody run into that one. <laughs> um, in Twitch me. chat, we actually have Slade, who's uh, he's my marketing guy. He also is my brother-in-law. Um, he takes good care of my sister, so we keep him. Oh, yeah, we're definitely enjoying the game. Drop everything, Slade. <laughs> So I, I'm assuming you're not going to have any questions. May, I might have some questions for you if we keep this up. All right. 
I might need some guidance from the from the lead lead dev here. You know, I don't think you do. I think you've already solved this one. You just didn't realize you had solved it. Like splatter some blood right there. Or don't. You can also skip it if you'd like. You can skip it. <laughs> oh, hey, I got through you there. Did. See? Ah. Yeah, you rock. You know. Okay. No, well, not on the way back, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. All right, so I wasn't supposed to do that right there, apparently. Uh, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're absolutely fine. Just go back out. Oh, oh. don't. That's funny. Like ten seconds later, he's gonna be like, oh, "What'd you do wrong? Would you?" Don't. <laughs> oh no. No. There you go. Oh, oh. <laughs> the stream lag. <laughs> oh, that's when we lose our FTL, right? Faster than light. All right, here we go. Maybe. All right, this is different. This is definitely different. Interesting VR puzzle. How so? What do you think is interesting about uh, it? I mean, like a uh, puzzle maze, I guess. It's kind of both. Yeah. I do likes. Okay. I do likes. Uh, I just gotta. Don't want to be stuck in here for too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing's on a timer in this game, so you're fine there. And Actually, good. I lied. There is stuff later that's. It's not on a timer, but. Like, there. you will have pressure. All right, so it kind of sounds like a marble, somewhat. Uh, yeah, I mean the sounds and the music really have me intrigued. So, uh, that is one of the big things that's like that we had a really hard time showing in the trailer. Like, <laughs> this is also a really hard game to trailer. I don't know if you know that, but like, trying to show that it's that it's more than just bouncing a marble around a like around a maze I, I put it up on one form and the guy's like eh, this has been done and I'm like well it hasn't been done in VR and it hasn't been done with three and a half hours of story and it hasn't been done with an adaptive soundtrack but you're right labyrinth exists <laughs> so apparently I finally made it through the maze and yeah uh, got it. yeah and uh, that also kind of finally I just noticed that those three squares are my uh, health bar <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. You'll notice them a little bit more now, though. I would assume. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, it has it has a pretty solid chunk of feedback on it when you hit stuff. Um, right. It's just not as big as the the spike when you hit the spike. Because the things I want people to notice in order is don't hit those, and also eventually, like this is what you have to pay attention to. So I'm a, now I'm also going to take a wild gander at those black. Not not the blue areas, uh, but the black ones are the ones that are telling you you've already completed it. Yes, sir. All right. Hey, look, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that's that for me. That's about a perfect, comfortable rate of learning. Um, like, I I want it to feel mysterious, but by the time you've done it three or four times, you know, like I Oops. I don't know. I, I'm just gonna put words in your mouth right now if you don't mind. Go for it. Like none of that was something that would have made you drop this game and stop right no no and so now that you're into this point you're like okay all right i'm invested and then you start to see these things and they roll out slowly and you know you're you're there so th that's like of the things that i tuned and i wanted to happen properly this has all come together the way that i wanted so that's good <laughs> excellent all right uh, you weren't supposed to be there Hmm. How long have you been working on this game? Um, I believe the correct answer is 18 months. Okay. Uh, but I've been working on it part time and like I, I have a wife and two kids and for a while I had to like I was also working to, to keep them fed. Uh, I was actually a cashier at a Lowe's for a while. Um, <laughs> And no, then I'd no. come home and hug and kiss the kids and put them in bed and, and come back and, like, sit down and do this. And it, it was, I don't know. I look back on that time now and I was like, dang, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was optimal. 
All right, so green bar here, green button here. Got to remove that little lever. Which you'll see in about 10 seconds. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're, like, you're clicking together things in the order that you should be clicking them together in. I would like to think that was true. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Don't see an orange button anywhere. Well, wait, there's one right there, but I got to get that one to move. Ooh, it's a puzzle. It is a puzzle. There it is. It just moved. But now something else is blocking me, which would be that one. Which means I've got to unlock it again. Andrew, you still with us? <laughs> I just... am indeed. We've been talking about marketing in uh, the Twitch chat. Game marketing with uh, Drop Everything Slade. Sorry for you folks in Mixer and the YouTube streams. Uh, I need to get chat going all over the place. We've been talking about how... Uh, They've been marketing the game, talking about reaching out to different YouTube channels and game devs, live streaming the game on Facebook, uh, doing a paid Facebook ad campaign when it comes out on Steam, reaching out to other game devs whenever to do a game code exchange to review each other's games. And that's actually the one that I'm personally the most excited about right now, because um, like, I. I want to be playing other people's games and know what people are doing in this space, you know? Like, I, I want to see what the indie community is up to. And the indie community is just so big, it's hard to see, like, any individual picture of what's going on, you know? Well, it's always been a truth of the industry that most of us get into it mainly to get free games from other people. <laughs> <laughs> when I've completed my game, I can trade other people and get their game. So let's not deny, graft and corruption is what drives this industry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if graft and corruption isn't what drives the world, then <laughs> I am not. <laughs> We're living in the wrong timeline. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and also so, take me there. That's where I want to be. <laughs> Ugh. So... Very excited by uh, how this come together. And one thing we've been talking about is um, how supportive the puzzle developer community is. So I pointed Slade out to our Thinker YouTube interview with uh, Robert Waller. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm just reading through that now. I've been really engrossed with what what Brian's going to run into next. <laughs> how badly <sighs> Brian is destroying everything. In yeah, area. Brian <laughs> is not playing well. <laughs> Fortunately, this one hasn't broken yet, and it is challenging him. Um, if it challenges him for about three more minutes, though, like that makes me question the difficulty of this level. That's the trouble with being an indie dev. Being able to put those metrics into the game to keep track of this is so very mm -hmm. difficult. You do have to be sitting there staring over people's shoulders, which is why yeah. I only sell my games to people I know and sit them at, sit there and stare at them the entire time. <laughs> <of play. laughs> <laughs> that's such a good like that's, a, that's an amazing model i want to write that down i'm gonna write that down because this is how i'm gonna make money now it's gonna be called torture and i'm gonna store information from people oh my god brilliant. oh my god well it's worked for all our social media channels so. <laughs> well hey you know what on the, on the other end i can i can like sit here and play it like uh i don't know how to solve this yeah yeah because i don't want to give everybody spoilers on how to defeat each level that's not true i'm actually seriously struggling here <laughs> although um, like when we when we did when we did sinker though i was i realized after i got through what like 30 plus some odd levels i was like oh wow you know what this is kind of a spoiler <laughs> it's the first look that's what they're supposed to do yeah no Everybody like if, if people don't want to have this spoiled for them you know they just you know turn off the video and just listen to us talk because you're not going to get anything you know, spoiled with that stock. And to be <laughs> honest, watching Brian play this game is not teaching anyone how to beat it. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, a nice introduction to how to play. People should do it, watch, see how it's played, and then it is a different experience when they do it later. Like, I had not gotten very far into Sinker until after Brian did that stream. Then I got into it, and actually, having watched him... Um, helped in that I understood the controls that did not help in that I understood how to solve the puzzle. There are too many of them. And that's <gasps> oh, you too. dirty... Mm. <laughs> really? So, Brian, he here's the new piece of information sh that you should know. Uh -huh. I heard that you were going to do this, and I built just a level that was so hard and so impossible <laughs> just far enough in where uh -huh. you'd be trapped. Yeah. See, personalized game development. Sit there and stare at the whole time next as well. Coming at you straight from Nebraska, Georgia. 
<laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so if you want, I, I can just tell you the order of the switches to hit. Yes, please. But, like, I'll, I'll take this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it like, now. If you, all right. Sounds good. Um, you're going to want to restart the level. Oh. And then... Is well, I mean, you, you can still do it from where you are, but I like I can't tell you the order of the switches right now. It's okay. Um, Restarting, and I will sit here and stare at the wall in punishment. Right. Well, you're and I'm 15 have... seconds behind you. So <laughs> We have a good question from X2Line while you do that. All right. And it goes back to the question of why VR. Why did you choose VR? It seems to be a good fit for mobile with a simple 2D and accelerometer to handle the ball. The game looks very good, but hard to understand at the very beginning. Ah, uh, yes. So what they're not aware of is that this is actually all a 3D model. And if I were trying to do it in 2D, um, well, okay. So I, I guess the question is like from from my game design document on, right? Oh. Like, why oh my did god, I... you just said three magic words. Please say them again. <laughs> did you mean game design document? Yes, thank no, you. No, no, no. Um... <laughs> oh, so students are you the listening to that <laughs> well okay so i told you guys the first thing that goes on my game design document right and i don't know if this is the way with everybody because the method i developed is not the method that everyone will develop and in fact uh the people that i'm working right, with right now my programmer and and slade both disagree with me on this method um but i like to write down the three things that i want to make sure every player feels when they feel when they play the game right because the most powerful thing about games is they make you feel things right they put you in a place where you are like intimately connected to everything that is going on because you're a part of it. You're making the decisions. And so if we start by saying this is the puzzle and this is how, like, not sorry, I swapped in another word that I didn't want to say. This is the feeling that we want our players to have. This is where we want them to be. Um, then we can design out from that point to make them feel that emotion, right? So I, I think that this is, and, and, like, I can imagine a lot of people at home being like, okay, yeah, sure, I'm going to write down awesome and cool and, like, no, like, you want them to, like, there are more complicated emotions than that, I guess, that that you're looking for. Wow. Is that helpful? Is that is that meaningful? <laughs> yes, by far. Okay. All right. So then from the game design document standpoint, the – what we were doing is we were saying, uh, we want to make something that will sell based on the hype that is already out there. And at the time, I mean, this was 18 months ago, the Google Cardboard was like, oh my goodness, I can slip my phone in this thing for like 10 bucks and I have VR in my pocket, right? Right. And then we saw a lot of these like really bad versions or like, the, I, I'm sure everyone who has done that has played the roller coaster demo. And gone up and down the roller coaster and taken the thing off and been like, never again. This is, my stomach feels awful. You know? <laughs> um, so, I, like, I started from that point in saying, like, w we have this hype and it was supposed to come out in, like, four months. And instead, uh, because I, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and I was working on it part time, I picked at it and picked at it and picked at it. <laughs> and uh, made something that I'm actually, I, I'm proud of. Like, if I had shown this to you after four months, it, you would have thrown it away and been like, that is garbage. But this is, I, I, I would say, worth the money that I'm asking for it. Um, no, not at all. So I, mean, I, mean... I got distracted from, from the initial question. Why VR? VR, because VR was popular when I started. And a challenge as well. <clears throat> challenge to start working in all right all right you're gonna spoil me now okay I'm yeah yeah so out. the first thing you have to do and i only remember this because like I, I drew this out in a diagram you hit the blue button and then you go down and hit the orange button and then you leave all that b for a while and you run over to the left the blue button and another issue that came like just recently and i don't know if you want to add this to your points list because you can if you want to <laughs> uh the <laughs> The blue and the purple look really close to the same color, but I oh. changed the color like a week before launch. So. so this is this is the purple. That's what I was assuming was purple. So I was okay. looking around for blue. Not yeah. sure if you were talking about uh, gray. And then so. the purple one is the one off to the right here. Yep. Hit that one. Okay. Yeah. And then go far off to the left. Oh. 
I didn't notice that was open. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what this level is asking you to do. Like, each level has one thing that it wants you to do. Um, and on this one, it is do something on your right and check it on your left. And I'm not so sure that's a good mechanic or enjoyable. It's but that's... not obvious. <laughs> yeah, so maybe that's something I, I need to uh, to work on a little bit. You need to get some flash, some sound, something indicating. Take a step yeah. to your left. Yeah. So... Uh, I'll put that in the notes and see if I can fix it up. Ah, uh, yes. That's another thing uh, I, I forgot to mention to you. Uh, hopefully you figured it out. That when we do these first look streams, uh, you better have a notebook ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're well, going to need it's, it. It's been really nice so far. I, I have appreciated it. Um, yeah, so... and Whoops. If, if I can give another word of advice to people who are creating a puzzle game with more than 50 levels, um, start with a naming scheme in advance and stick with it. Because the number of times I've been like, oh, that's on this other thing and I don't know where that other thing is. It, it's... Uh, yeah, do that with any game. Yeah. Make sure, like, as part of your game design document, yeah. thing, make sure that you have, okay. like, the schemes for naming things. Ahead. And it's very funny because... Usually when we talk about game design documents, there are a number of different reasons to do it. One is to make sure your team is all on the same, uh, is thinking this on the same wavelength. Uh, another reason is because you're going to use it to pitch and sell it, etc. Yours seems to all be to keep you on the same wavelength throughout the whole design uh, process. Well, and when you do it over like 18 months with only three hours a day working on it, like that's, that's absolutely required, you know? Yep. X2 Line brings up... Uh, Oh, it's our next one. Uh, uh, yeah, Nick, Nick. Nick Farmer Arts brings up a good point yep. that I actually agree with and uh, hadn't thought of it. Uh, he says he likes it because it reminds uh, him of Marble Madness, which was also a good game. Good yep. game. It's a great game. Yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That yeah, was, it was. I finally I, made it too far to say that was an industry-defining game because, like, being able to take the concept of 3D and go up a step is really cool. I know? think it was, especially in the arcade. Yeah. I mean, I mainly yeah. played it at, at home on my uh, Amiga, but really in the arcades it really we had like the trackball yeah. yep <laughs> so yeah. again again that uh, progression map you know I, I would definitely like uh to be able to say uh skip past it or something you know because it, i it, it pops up and i don't really you know i i understand because you told me but had i not been talking to you i wouldn't be sure what that little map is uh the progression map is what you were talking about yeah so let me ask you this question. Would you sure. rather have it longer or not at all? I would I uh, would rather have it there, but maybe uh, look into a direction that says next or something like that. Because my first impression was like, okay, is a progression map, could I go somewhere else from there? But that's not what you're intending to do. That's this right here, right? Because these black yeah. marks are telling me that I – and I finally figured that out. All these black squares are the ones that I've completed. So I don't need to go back to them. Yeah. Yeah. But your progression map would be uh, what I'm suggesting is to have, like, uh, say, OK or a next or something along that lines. Something to let me know that, you know, this is. Had I been able to stare at it the very first time, it may have made sense the next time it came up to me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or, like, maybe an introduction to the concept, at least, to be like, this is what's going on in more of. Like, and. I think the voiceover was intended to do that, but I'm not so sure it actually achieves that. Yeah. I don't just, know. This game does rely on the voiceover to tell you a lot about it. Um, but at the same time, like, that that's just... Yeah. Right. I, I've written it down. I'll figure out a solution. That, yeah. I like Robert Waller's way of doing uh, the progression, which was to introduce a concept in one level and then make it difficult in the next level and then introduce new concepts. Yep, yeah, and uh, on the simple basis... Level. Right, and it's kind of like a, a the reward system, if you will. Like uh, the player, when you when you start off a new level, um, you want it to be easy so that your player can figure out how to play it uh, and learn how to play the game. And then, you know, of course, the next level steps up the difficulty just a little bit until you come to like a, AKA a boss level. But once you beat that boss level and you introduce new concepts, 
then you know the, the very next level is actually simple again. So your player is uh, encouraged to keep go moving forward. It's like, oh my god, it took me forever to figure that one out. All right, now this okay, that one was easy. I'm I'm good to go. If I'm still making sense here, oh boy, I got more teeth to deal with. Spikes. <laughs> Yeah, Blood. so this is a variation on a concept that you saw earlier. Oh, can't get past it? That was a healer. So some bubbles are healers? Well, <laughs> let, let's see. I, I want by the end of this level to see if you can tell me what it means. Because um, if, I, if, I, if you can do that, I'm comfortable with it and I'm not going to make any changes. <laughs> Wait a minute, this is me you're talking to now. <laughs> I trust you. I think you're going to do good. All right, that, so it wasn't quite a healer, was it? Let's see. I do like how, you know, I, you know and I'm just, I kind of figured it out earlier, but yeah, you can leave your ball alone and try to scope out the map beforehand. Try to, like I said. <laughs> yeah, and the, so... I shouldn't mention the voiceover so much because I have introduced an option to turn them off, but um, the the voiceovers take like sometimes as much as 30 seconds. And the idea that I had was during that time, you'd be looking around kind of checking out and figuring out the map. And I don't know if I've introduced that concept well enough. Uh, that concept was supposed to be introduced in the level that we just did, but um, I, I've written it down, so... <laughs> I'm sorry. Oof. I'm just going to Leroy Jenkins here. Leroy Jenkins! Uh, let's see, we got two Oh, spikes. man, at least you got chicken, I... right? Yeah, uh, at least I got chicken. Uh... I, I, okay, I just now discovered this as well. Once you hit a spike, it's not going to you, hurt you again. All right. So now I can Leroy with safely. Not where, no. Yeah, the color change is a nice indicator there on the spikes. Yeah. Access yeah. denied. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how mm. big is your game design document? Just got to How many pages do you estimate it to be? <laughs> This one is slim. The one for the next game I'm working on is already like 15 pages. <laughs> oh my god! Um, I think that's all. Yeah. So, <laughs> Andrew, well, how big is Nor uh, Noble Armada's game design document? <laughs> it's in um, multiple stages. It's in multiple parts, and yeah, long, long. The issue so, all you always have is you want to make sure people actually read it. So it doesn't help to be too long, but you also want to have it be complete if case you need to go back and double check things. Gotcha. So Brian, I want to talk to you for just a second because uh, I, I think right now you already have the answer to this level and you don't need to go gather all this other stuff. Um, I, so we should definitely talk about game design documents, but I want to give you a hint really quick. Okay. Um, in fact, we may just give you a point for this. Uh, that spike that you've already hit on the way out to out the door there, um, yeah. you, can sneak, you can still sneak past that. Really? Just got to yeah. speed through it? it? Yeah. Um, so one of the principles uh, that you learn in this is is the principle of hugging walls, right? Um, and I think you've kind of already got that feeling. Like you there just smash into walls and you, you stay close yep. to it, right? Yep. You're going to see it right about... I was wondering. <laughs> right about now. Yep, there you go. You got it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'll take that as a point. Uh, I think we'll give me half point. Half point. Okay. Wow, that's the first time I've had a half point. <laughs> uh, well, I like to work in halves. I like to say, you know, when I fail miserably at something, that I get half credit for that because that's still a failure. But you know, I also get credit, so that's a thing. Well, how do you feel about the publishing? I mean, uh, when did you publish this? So I put it out on the 20th of uh, February. That's not been very long. All right. Um, we also haven't hit it very hard on the marketing end of things. So we've we've only sold up to this point 
uh, I think I'm actually under contract not to give you numbers specifically. Okay. But I can tell you less than, certainly less than is worth it, but we're, <laughs> we're not even close to done yet. Um, All right. But more than uh, 10. So. <laughs> Bigger than a bread box. Bigger than, well, smaller. Well, I, I don't know. How do, <laughs> see, here's the thing. I don't know how digital measures up against a bread box. Like. <laughs> Wow. All right, so uh, how far away am I from the boss? From the boss? Yeah, from uh, the boss level. You have, in the world of ambition here, which is what I've called this wing internally and is never called that in the game, um, you're about, you're through the tutorials for this section. <laughs> oh, so I'm not progressing as fast as you had thought I would, huh? <laughs> yeah, I would guess we're probably not going to get to the boss. <laughs> But also, we didn't get to any of the really, really interesting ones. So can I take you to one interesting level quick yes, before please. we quit? Yeah, for sure. Um, and actually, well, so, um, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, which so way you I want forget to which one of these three that you're looking at right now it is. Um, but I think it's the one, if you go farthest to your right in there. Uh, I, I took quite a bit of time and teased out for a while. And it's, it's really fun, and I want to see how it tests for you. So if you go to the one, like at the terminal end of this. Oh shoot, there was a note I should have written down and I didn't yet. <laughs> Had yeah, something to do with telegraphing. Oh, this is telegraphing the check the screen thing. Any cheat codes? <laughs> no. Really? Uh, we, we don't. Wait, what, what's the Phineas and Ferb line? Oh my goodness. There's in Phineas and Ferb, there's this line, because I watch it with my kids all the time. Oh, you want cheat codes? Nah, we don't play like that. <laughs> well, hey, you know, a lot of times you, you, developers do put in cheat codes just so that they can progress and test on their own. Yeah. They just don't let everybody know about it. Yeah, the cheat <laughs> codes are for the testers, they're not for the fans. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I don't have any of that built in. Uh, all I've done, like each each level, is a different scene in Unity. Um, so I test scenes individually until the scene functions properly. Um, and before release, I made sure that I played the whole thing from beginning to end, and it worked. Um, so there's probably more testing that could have gone on there. Gotcha. So is this the correct one that you wanted me to go to? Yes, yeah, right, you're cool. there. Alright, boss level. Eh, we'll, we'll call it the boss level. <laughs> it's not, but we'll call it that. Okay, box. Door. Well, let's look around for a little bit. Yeah. This is not the one I was thinking of. Oh, anyway, I can, <laughs> you want me to step backwards? Yeah, yeah, just go back to the menu really quick. Um, you might actually just be able to beat this level faster than you can get back out and get back in. Okay. I'm 15 seconds behind, so I actually don't know what decision you've made yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> Whoops. 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 You're gonna like uh, this. Oh, did that actually get you stuck in there? <laughs> that one's not supposed to do that. No. 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 And I've tested that one quite a bit to make sure it didn't do that. Guess what? You found it. Man, you gotta be up to like this has to be a high score for you. No, you're not the highest score yet. <laughs> uh, well, Although I need to start tracking. All right, so where do I need to go? Uh, actually, this is gonna be kind of cool. Go to the back wall. Oh, hello. And then, so what yeah. I've been looking for has been there the whole time. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dude. Wow. Okay. Okay. So you stare at the box and it takes you back to that set of levels. Um, Is that what you want me to do? Yeah. Stare at the box. Okay. And you can also just, I actually don't know if in this version you can run into the box, that might crash it. In an older version, if you ran into the box, it would crash the game. But if you stare at the box, you'll be fine. Okay, so where do you want me to go now? 
Uh, up in that same arm. Uh, oh, oh, I know what happened. I know what happened. Okay, go back into that world that you were in. Bear with us, folks. Come back here. I said this way. <laughs> hey, you there. Get over there. You, get over here. Here. Heal. As my dog is like pacing back and forth behind the door over there. <laughs> He's like, yeah, Brian, I'm listening. I'm right yeah, here. I'm right here, right here. Okay. I'm in here. Uh, let's see, there's that. And there we go. So I I think it's the um if it's not the one on the terminal arm, it's probably the first one that you reach in that section. So you go to the top right section and then just take your first box. So literally if I had not interrupted you, we would have been done with this level already. <laughs> ah, all good. <clears throat> Is this the one you were looking for? I'll tell you in fifteen seconds. Yep. <clears throat> Or for a dollar, you got a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but this one's really good, and let's do it. Okay. This one actually, uh, this level is a child um, that I named Tel Non, uh, and she is um, very very curious and she tells a joke at the beginning that is one of those nonsense kid jokes um i don't know if you've if you've heard these jokes but it's like a punchline but oh you gone done did it i put a reset button in there just for you what i did i died yeah basically um you put yourself in a place where you're locked in this is so this one's intentional, and I don't know how well that reads, but you are stuck inside that box right now, and you're not getting out. Okay. And that, on the other hand, is a bug. <laughs> you're racking them up, up, buddy. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> You thought you liked the Georgia Game Developers Association. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still love you guys. This has been amazing. I shouldn't have done it again. Did I? Apparently I did. No, I think you're good. <clears throat> well, yeah, you're I restarted good. anyway. <clears throat> well... You're fine. You're fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, you're going to live. You're going to survive. <laughs> Trust the level design a little bit more than that. Just a little. And I'll stop you in 15 seconds if you've done something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, I'm aware people at home are not going to have. So. Right, right, right. Let's see if we got any more comments or questions. Ooh, we'll yeah, I think that's on. a great idea. While I hover here above this green door. All right, looks like we're clear. All right, help us out here. Last level. I'm just you want hovering. help from me? Yeah. Now you got it. You did it right last time. What, this? Yeah. You're fine. You're doing great. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, there it is. Yeah, see? Oh, okay. I'll see it in 15 seconds myself, but you're, you're doing great. <laughs> Uh huh. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, I can tell I you there are actually level? a couple of different correct ways to solve this one. So one of the clues that, like last time on a reset, and didn't need, didn't mean to, uh, was the audio of the marble bouncing around. I just kind of figured that out. Okay. Ah, oh, can't leave me like this. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. Open. And I hear it bouncing around. There it is. I'm still trapped. 
Alrighty then. <laughs> well, you're doing fine. To me, it looks like you're solving the level, so maybe, uh, maybe it's a little bit more esoteric than I thought. Oh, oh, I'm also oh, pretty oh, sure oh. I didn't use that word right, but. <laughs> no, you're doing great. You're doing great. Like I'm 15 know. seconds in the past here, but I'm telling you, you're, you're looking gorgeous. This is amazing. You could be pro. Come on, you. This would be fun in VR, I have to admit. Yeah. So this is actually one of the coolest things that happened. Now, I got to tell you this story before we quit. My wife's grandmother, um, who is actually not very old, uh, she is... Ooh, you're going the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. No, no, <laughs> oh, it's okay. Me. We got you. <laughs> Um, she is a useful she, I, I sat her down with the game because I was like, well, you know, she's not my target audience, but maybe this will be fun. And I'd also like to show her what I'm doing, you know. Um, and she got done. She's like, you know, I wasn't really into the game, but I got done on my neck. It's like all stretched out. It's amazing. <laughs> this is the greatest neck workout I've had in months. <laughs> I was like, you know, Nana, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I realized there's a sub market for VR games. It's yes. old folks' homes and keeping their necks limber. Well, it's also good for the folks trying to lose weight but don't want to be bulimic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there is a fine line there, too. I think I'm dead. No, you're good. You still got it, dude. I don't see it. Where's me ball? <laughs> Where be he ball? <laughs> Where be me ball, mighty? Hmm. Well, I can't tell because my internet connection is actually a little bit slow as far as the oh. download goes. Um, and so you're jumping around quite a bit. But I'm pretty sure you're still there. I don't see me ball, mate. All right. Well, maybe uh, it clipped out of bounds. And if that's the case... Talk up one more score to end up the night, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just all seems right. unlikely. Okay, so it's all pointing behind you, which is just blowing my mind. Like, it is... It's moving right now. What is this? This is literally something I have not seen in testing at all. So. Oh. Yay, Brian wins! <laughs> and I have done a lot of, like, a lot of the bugs that you found, I've been like, huh, yeah, you know, like, I can see how that would happen. Or, like, I've been ironing that one out for a month already. But this one, like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this effect when you teleport. Uh, that like washes between the two teleports and shows you where you go. Um, and I didn't catch it when you did it. Well, it'll be on the video. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back in the video and see what happened because that is, that is strange. That is, uh -huh. huh. There we go. There's a good place to end it right there. Encompassed. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you so much for playing. Can oh, I get no. you to do the the basic QA testing thing for me really quick? What was that? What did you think? I love it. Like, honestly, honestly, you don't have to protect my feeling. I don't care. I want to know. No, no, like, no. <clears throat> um, I'll be brutally honest with you. Um, I don't have a VR headset. I could see myself having a lot of fun with this in VR. Um, it is a, I do love puzzle games, and I'm what attracts me personally, on my own opinion, is I like psychedelic music and, you know, psychedelic uh, sound effects, uh, especially for guides and, you know, in entertainment. Uh, I'm going to throw another game out there other than Sinker. Um, uh, if you haven't checked out Sinker yet from Robert Paul, uh, Waller, uh, Waller Studios, is that what it's called? Waller Digital. Wa Waller Digital. <laughs> digital. <laughs> Waller Digital, right? <laughs> I'm chewing on a bunch of gum here, right? <laughs> um, well, anyways, that, the that music sound is, problem is exactly what I've. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, that, no, the music, the music and sound kind of drives me personally. Uh, it's I'm one of the rare players that actually likes that. Uh, when it comes to mobile games, though, I do tend to turn off sound and music. That's just me. But with uh, immersive games like this. Uh, I do love uh, music and sound effects, and there's another one that I will throw out there. It's called Osmos. 
OSMOS. Um, it's a it's a physics puzzle game, uh, like based in um, zero gravity. Uh, it also has certain levels that has AI and so forth. But uh, unfortunately, it's not a Georgia made game. I'm plugging it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'll well, tag you guys and you'll appreciate us in the YouTube video. There you go. But anyways, <laughs> uh, the point being is that it's, the music is pretty driving. And, you know, to me, it helps to guide me as a player. Uh, I'm looking forward to actually spending a little bit more time with this. Um, so, yeah. And I, I would definitely love to see what, uh, any of the new updates that you come up with in the future. And, you know, with the GGDA, we do do second first looks. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So, I'm yeah. on board with that concept. Yeah, uh, and now you are. I gotta our... tell you though, um, they're like I'm gonna I'm gonna go through and pick out bugs for sure. Um, you know, like you do at any good restaurant. Uh... <laughs> okay. You do live in Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska, Georgia, picking out bugs from your restaurants. Gotcha. <laughs> no, I am gonna go through and pick out the bugs, but I don't know if I'm gonna take this game to a point where it's like super super polished and super beautiful um mostly because the next project i'm on is just so exciting like um I, I've you can tell us it. about it without breaking an nda uh well so far the nda is me and my programmer who i trust to the end of the earth like i trust with my life and my brother-in-law who i trust at least that much um so <laughs> it's I, the only person i'd be hanging is myself um that being said, uh, we've codenamed it Project Sphinx, um, and it is a, a riddle game. <laughs> it's a modern uh, mobile take on a mud. Oh. So, as a, and I'll, I'll just tell you that we're getting rid of all that janky parser crap. I do miss mud. I I'm actually really excited about it. I think it's going to work out really well. But uh, Jeff Yart, uh, Jeff Jeff Yart on uh, Mixer. Um, thank you for that awesome compliment. Be sure to follow and uh, also in our video watchers. Be sure to follow and uh, click subscribe and everything along that lines. Actually, let me do a little uh, thingy do hickey here. Nope, that's not, oh, there we go. Uh, screen's going to look kind of wonky for a minute. And whoops, sorry. Here, I'll bring back the game. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> now you can see me. Uh, for all of those out there watching, be sure to hit the uh, follow, subscribe, like buttons. It really helps us out a lot. Um, and uh, Jeff Rart, you, uh, as a first time watcher here, I love this format where you show gameplay in real time. It's very engaging compared to watching pre recorded, unless you play videos on, uh, uh, as you do on YouTube. So yeah, yeah. Uh, for those of the, watching this on YouTube, um, this was real time. I've never played the game before. I've only played up to the first level, so you kind of got the experience. And also, you got to hear me, us talk to uh, Nick, uh, the de one of the or the de the developer, right? Yeah, I mean, I can't take complete credit for it because there's no way I'd have gotten here without a lot of help from other people. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was amazing. I, I love talking with you guys. It's good to be, you know, talking with, with people who know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I came off as somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, but like it, it was also really, for me, it was really powerful to to know that I've done some things that are on the right lines for you know good game development. Just, I don't know the word for it. Good game development principles. You know, starting with a game design document, looking for ways to convey emotion. Um, and I thank you. It's been really amazing. Yeah. Well, you heard it there, folks. He called uh, us. He called me a professional, or, or at least I know <laughs> what I'm doing. <laughs> right, yeah, Andrew? I, the word I know what I'm doing. You guys, you guys are awesome. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. So thank you very much, Nick. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for tuning in, and thank you, everybody else. Um, meanwhile, the the screen's going to get a little wonky while I do some more settings here and throw this at you. Please stay tuned for our next commercial. And uh, thanks again, Nick, and we'll see you next week. We'll see you.